This is a music documentary, an insight into a songwriter and his band. Hello, my name is Adam Collins, I'm in a band called Urban Spray and I'm the lead singer and a songwriter. Um, so uh, when did you start writing songs? I started writing songs when I was about 15 or 16. Uh, I wanted somewhere to put my, my feelings and to get that across and uh, music and songwriting was the best way. Who inspired you to start writing songs? Bands inspired me, such as The Verve and The Beatles and uh, also The Smiths and also songwriters like Richard Ashcroft and Morrissey and also John Lennon, I would piece that for. Where do you start writing a song? Normally for me it begins from you know, some, something that I hear on, on TV or something which just catches my imagination that I suddenly get motivated to go, to go and write a song. How long is the creative process of writing a song? The creative process varies, it can, um, it can be 20 minutes, it could be half an hour, it could be three days, it could be weeks. I've worked on songs which have gone for months, but then at the same time I've worked on songs which have took less than a night to complete. So, What instruments do you write on most of? Is it guitar or anything else? I'd say guitar and piano. Um, I can't really play anything else, so you won't catch me on like an over or anything like that. So, I have been Adam, this is part one. Catch you guys soon. Moonbase Studios, Coventry. Moonbase Studios. Producer John Moonbat. What the name? Recording is a long and tiring process. You end up playing the same song non stop all day. The band lay down a rough track with each member overdubbing their parts throughout the day. Moonbase Studio is a great studio, full of old 60s analogue equipment. Vocals go on last. <laughs> A day in the studio is always good fun, but at times it proves stressful and hard work. John Moonbow has been producing bands for over 16 years. 
Each band member and the producer want their own cut on the track, so you have to make a compromise. So that's just yours. Yeah. If I had mine without any drive on it. Yeah. What do you think, Edo? I don't know whether it's, it's too um. No, but in the pink. As the day progresses, you start to make more mistakes. There was, illegal note in there? there was, yeah, a little mistake. If somebody messes up, then it wastes valuable recording time. Oh, oh. Don't look at me like that, man. <laughs> Get that right. That. You gotta up. change the drum in there anyway. Like. Oh, that was a good take as well. Oh. You, Tom. Now, Tom. <laughs> so, what's your opinion on record labels and promoters? Do you think they have a massive amount of power? Well, they have. They, surely, they have uh, all the power, don't they? They can make or break a band. It's a shame, but that's just the way it is, isn't it? There's no money in it, so people aren't there. Get your hands in your pockets. So, uh, tell us a bit about your own band. My band. Well done, we're a very, very good band. Our name is Urban Spirit, you can be found online at www.urbanspirit.co.uk. Uh, check there for all sorts of merchandise, tickets, for us. Okay, so what gigs have your band played so far? We've played um, for our commentary locations like uh, Rosing Alliance in commentary, which is good. Different places around commentary. We've played a few, we've played Golden Cross as well. We haven't played Taylor John's club because I don't think they like me very much. Or well, they don't like our music. One of the two. They never get back to me. Better loss. Is guitar music dying out, do you think? Guitar music is dying out. So, uh, which was your most memorable gig you've ever played? Memorable gig, I would say, um, I'd say the to Academy in Birmingham. That meant a lot. They're playing on such a stage. And I think we went to see maybe Miles Kane play there. A few months early, and I think BDR played on the same stage. Grant was not very good, but there's still a big bat playing on the same stage a week or so before. That, that was pretty epic, man. I mean, you, you stand there and you can't look out at all the people out there. It's, it's mental, and it just shows you yeah, how close you are, but at the same time, how far away you are. And I guess it's just about putting the hard work in to get to that, to get to that stage. So, thanks for joining us, Adam. Cheers for that. Thanks a lot, Alex. Cheers, man. Catch you soon. Catch you soon. It was the sweet and tender hooligan, hooligan. He said that he'll never, never do it again. And of course he won't. And nothing till the next time.